Hey guys, Casey Guy 2 here, no nonsense know how. Today I want to tell you about my 1999 BMW F650 that I've owned for 10 years and I've put over 30,000 miles on this thing. I want to tell you some of the mods I've done to it, how much I love it, and just what a great, awesome bike it is. So let's get started here. It's the middle of winter, so I haven't been riding too much, but uh, we've got 40k on the clock here. And I bought this bike back in 2008, almost 10 years ago, for $3,000 with just over 10,000 miles on it. So, all right, and now is the part where I'm gonna ramble on and tell you all about this bike, some of, some of the things I like about it. Are there more expensive, more amazing bikes out there? Absolutely, but for what the price you can pick these things up, anywhere from two grand to like, 3500 this is a phenomenal motorcycle i've ridden this thing to, to the west coast and back on several occasions up to maine and canada and uh you know down to even mexico so <clears throat> this is an awesome bike you can hop on the highway and do 80 85 miles an hour and you know not too comfortably but it does it and it gets it done for 6,000 miles at a clip you know um and then you can hop up the trails and in Colorado and Utah, and just, just this thing handles awesome off-road. It, it handles good on-road, it handles good off-road. So, um, one thing you're going to notice here is the back's pretty high on this. I gave this bike a two-inch lift, um, and I'll do another video on that and how to, how to drop it two inches. It's actually adjustable. So, the back is raised two inches. You'll also notice I'm missing my front fender. Um, I took that off because it got broken, and I never put it back on. It hasn't been an issue. These holes here are from uh, LED auxiliary lights I had. I'm waiting on some new ones to put on there. So, uh, of course, I got my flip-flops here as well. Uh, we're going to just jump around and show you a bunch of odds and ends. You're probably wondering, what is this funnel? Well, I put that there because to fill this radiator, the cap is back here, is always such a pain to try to fill that. So I had this hose just kind of chills in here and you, you pull this up and I have a hole through the fender and you can fill the radiator easy if you ever have to. These back here are for the luggage racks, which I don't really use anymore, but I just left them on there anyway. It's nice to be able to uh, tie things on there. So now this single cylinder engine is made by Rotax in Austria. Phenomenal engine. The only problem I've ever actually had with it, if you look down here, you'll see this silicone rubbed all up on the head like that. Now, after I, when I first got this bike, the head gasket was leaking coolant externally around the whole thing. So uh, at some point I, I cleaned that up with a wire brush around the whole thing, had the exhaust off, and I used what's called Permatex The Right Stuff. Rubbed it on the outside, never had any coolant leak again. So that is a very ghetto fix, but it's worked for many, many thousand miles. All right, so along with the two inch lift, I also removed the center stand that bolts on under here uh, because, you know, I was finding that, that would think that would catch things off road and stuff like that too. And I like the extra ground clearance. I've got the factory BMW tank bag on here. It zips off to get to the gas tank. I uh, love this bag. It's also expandable. You zip it around here and this thing gets gets even taller up here. So, you know, it gives you a good wind block when you're going down the highway too. Of course, you got your Ram cell phone mount. This thing's been off-road. Uh, never had a phone come out of it and it's, it's perfect. So, of course, you know, cup holder. Everybody needs one of those. Uh, the factory mirrors on this bike are awesome. You know, they don't fold down, but they work so great. They don't vibrate. I can I can see things. Uh, I thought about putting some bark busters on here, but these these seem to keep you know little branches off me and stuff like that, and they work fine for now. So I've been leaving them there. Uh, up here, the battery's dead on this, but this is exterior temperature, and then uh, engine coolant temperature. You got a voltmeter for when it's charging. Now you might notice the chain guard. I broke, this. you actually had like a stump buster come around on the back here or like a mud guard or something like that. I don't know what they're called, but I broke that a while back. So I just cut that off and uh, you know, cut that nice and flush like that. So that works good. The stain tune exhaust is just a slip on. So you got your factory header and then the stain tune. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that, but found that on eBay for about 150 bucks. From the factory, these come with rubber insulators on the foot pegs, but I found I took those off because they get a little slippery when they're muddy and wet and stuff like that. You know, for the back, you can leave them on, but on here, I like having the foot pegs, right? Uh, you know, steel like that. The crash bars, I'm not sure if these are factory or not, but they came with the bike, and uh, they're definitely great for when you drop this thing off-road. Mind you, you know, one of the great things I love about this motorcycle is I can load this up with, I put a top case, the BMW top case on the back. I don't use the side luggage anymore because I like to keep it thin for when I have to get through 
through a barricade or something like that. Um, but what I love about this bike is you can have it loaded up with all your gear, go off-road, and if you're in the middle of nowhere by yourself, you can drop this thing and you can still pick it up without somebody's help. A lot of these these big BMW 1200s and all these, you know, it, there's a technique to picking up a bike, but this bike is manageable with one person. You know, you get it stuck off-road, you can still get this thing out on your own. It's still a heavy bike, but you know, I think it's around 400 pounds or so, if I remember correct. I am missing the blinker on this side that, that broke right off, so I gotta get a new one of those. Um, you know, when this bike falls, it, it actually takes falls pretty well. It's been down a lot of times, and it doesn't get doesn't get real bit banged up and damaged. And of course, on your forks up here, I got some aftermarket boots that fit nicely uh, to keep rocks and things like that from dinging up your forks and then causing them to rust. I've also thought about making a screen, a mesh screen that goes over your radiator, so in case rocks and such don't hit that. In fact, that's actually a really good point. I should probably put that fender back on. My my originally the, the fender got broken, so I got to get another one of those. But yeah, if I have you know rocks, well the rocks are gonna really kick up from this way, so it has this guard down here, but. Yeah, not a bad idea to keep a fender on there. So anyway, that's the bike. Here's a quick picture of it, what it looks like when it's loaded down for my trips. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is just a, you know, it's a great bike. If, if you're looking for something, an all-around adventure bike, this is it right here. Reliability, you got carburetors, no fuel injection, none of that crap. Adjustable rear suspension, I mean, it works all right. The shocks are okay on this thing. Uh, add yourself a fuel filter there for in case you get debris inside the tank. Got a 12-volt charger right there. Um, I keep spare, spare components under the seat, so, you know, I have a little list there, so I, I don't have to check before a trip what's actually under there just keep that there yeah i know it's kind of ghetto um i did add stainless steel brake lines on this bike too because the factory one started leaking so you got your brembo dual piston caliper in the front uh super easy bike to work on guys i mean it's never leaked any oil but uh yeah check out my other video if you're curious about the suspension all you do is take this cover off and you can drop this thing back down two inches but and for those of you that aren't that familiar with this bike this is basically very similar to an Aprilia Pegaso 650, was actually even made in their factory in Italy. The engine is actually a Rotax 650 single CC, uh, four valve head, you know. So this was BMW's designs, but they basically stole the design of the Aprilia Pegaso and had them build it for them. And then since it was so successful, uh, this bike came out in 93 overseas and it wasn't in the US until 97. I think they discontinued it in like 2000 or 2001. Uh, you know, they started making their own F650 because there was a very, a high demand for these bikes um, but I'll tell you what you want a cheap reliable bike this is it guys this is an awesome bike it might not have all the frills and the show off you know and, and, and handle the best out of any, any bike out of there and a top of the line suspension but I'll tell you what this thing's never let me, well okay it did leave me let me down one time in south side of Chicago where I got off an exit I was trying to turn around and the bike shut off uh, the regulator wires melted together and, and blew the main fuse so one time it broke down but otherwise it's been down, crashed, you know, freaking, I mean, it's been a good bike, guys. It's been at the top of the Rocky Mountains, Mount Antero, you know, um, all these trails out there. I got to take some more videos, but listen, guys, I'm rambling now, but this is an awesome motorcycle. I give it a definite definite thumbs up. I've owned a lot of bikes, over 100 bikes, and this, this is a keeper, guys. So give it a thumbs up if the video helped out. Um, you know, don't give it a thumbs down unless you want to be a jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But listen, guys, KZ Guy 2, no nonsense, no how. And those are my thoughts on the 1999 BMW F650 Fundoro.